In this video, we're going to look at how hard medical school really is and what life could look like for you as a medical student. Medical school is known for being notoriously difficult, both academically and emotionally and personally. And before I started medical school, I had this image or this idea of a medical student being someone who was completely burnt out and just stressed all of the time and lived at the library. And yes, that has been me multiple times, especially around exams, but it hasn't been my entire experience. And if anything, my time at medical school has been so enjoyable and I can even say they've been some of the best years of my life. But why do people say that it's so hard and what makes it so difficult? So typically, medical school programs are broken down into preclinical and clinical years. Now, I did graduate entry medicine, so my program was accelerated. It was four years instead of your typical five or six years. So it has been a little bit different for me, but I'll give you like a generalized overview of medical school. So for me, I only had one preclinical year, but most people have two or three preclinical years. And in these years, you are basically learning all of the science behind medicine. So you're focusing on things like anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, ethics, etc. And all of these things really form the building blocks to your medical knowledge. And they're so crucial for you to know because later down the line, when you start seeing patients, you really need to know your science and what's happening behind the scenes to make sure that you can diagnose and treat people effectively. At my university, again, this was a graduate entry program, so it will be different to other standard medical programs. But the first year was broken down into different blocks of six to eight weeks, and each block would focus on a specific body system. So, for example, one block was heart and lungs, another block was neurology, another block was musculoskeletal, etc. In your pre-clinical years, most of your teaching will be lecture-based, but you might also have problem-based learning or case-based learning, depending on the university and the teaching style that they offer. These are really cool ways to come together with a group of other students to figure out how you're going to approach a situation with a patient. Some medical schools will introduce clinical exposure pretty early on. So for me, I went into hospital as early as my very first term in my first year, but it may vary for different universities. You will also have exams in your preclinical years, and this will vary between formative and summative exams, and again will be different at different universities. Exams will usually consist of short answer questions and multiple choice questions to assess your learning. Personally, I found my first year at medical school, which was my preclinical year, to be the hardest for me, but I think that was down to a number of different things. So I had moved to a new city that I'd never been to before. I didn't know absolutely anyone there. And I actually hadn't been studying for quite a long time, for maybe four or five years before I went into medical school. So the jump and the learning curve and the change in my life was huge. You really do have to find new ways of learning and you have to be creative in memorizing information. And I actually made another video on how I use Notion to study. So if you wanna check that out, it will be in the description below. So then moving on to your clinical years, which are typically years three, four, and five, you will be focusing a lot more of your time in clinical practice. So at GP practices or at different wards in the hospitals. And it's a really great opportunity for you to practice and see in reality everything that you have learnt in your preclinical years. This is where you will see what it's really like to work as part of a multidisciplinary team. And especially towards your final year, you start to get a lot more responsibility and you get to make decisions and you really have to think critically about how you're going to manage patients. I am only a couple of months away from finishing medical school, which is wild that I can even say that. And I'm actually currently on my very final placement at medical school and it is in acute medicine. So I get to spend a lot of time on A&E and on ambulatory care wards. 
and I get to clerk patients independently. I get to perform examinations and then report back directly to the consultant. And the consultants will usually ask me, what investigations do you want to do? What are your differentials? And how do you want to manage this patient? So it is a real full circle moment. I think you really start to feel like a doctor and like you're really making a difference in someone else's life. But it also feels kind of terrifying because you have to make decisions that will impact someone else's life. But the really cool thing is that you are never actually on your own and you never actually have to make these decisions by yourself, which is reassuring. And that's pretty much how it will be in your foundation years one and two. So you will have the support of your team and other doctors around you. In your clinical years, you will also be rotated around different wards, which will give you insight into different specialties and will allow you to gain an understanding of the variety that you will see in medicine. And you might be able to start to figure out what you really like and don't like and what you might see yourself doing in the future. On top of all of your time spent on placement at hospitals and GP practices, you may also still have teaching in your clinical years at your university. Things like case-based learning and problem-based learning and seminars and certain lectures will still be common and offered to you so that you are still exploring different conditions, diagnoses and treatments. One of the things that students typically struggle with here is balancing learning at the hospital with your traditional way of learning because they're very different. In your clinical years, you will also have more opportunity to practice in a simulated environment. This is where you participate in different scenarios with simulated patients or dummies or fake patients and they are a really good opportunity for you to practice your communication skills, your critical thinking, your problem solving, your leadership and your management in a safe way. We very often have simulated experiences and environments, particularly in our final year, which is really good because you can make all of the mistakes that you want so that you're really prepared for what life is going to be like as a doctor. In your clinical years, we still had both formative and summative exams, but you might also start doing more practical exams or clinical exams like OSCEs. These will assess your clinical skills and may be held in places like the hospital or back at your medical school. In your final year, you do have to sit the UK MLA, which is the Medical Licensing Assessment before graduating, which is a standardized exam that every medical school in the UK will have to sit to make sure that everyone meets standard competencies. And then finally, towards the end of your degree, you will have an opportunity to undertake an elective. These are often abroad, but you can take them in the UK and they're a really really cool opportunity for you to go and experience healthcare and work in a hospital abroad or explore a specialty or something that you are really interested in. So now let's talk a little bit about intercalation. This is an optional component that some medical schools will offer to give you an extra level of depth to your medical training. Intercalation is when a student takes one or two years outside of their medical degree to pursue an intercalated degree, which extends their medical training from four or five years to six or seven years. This time out allows students to delve into a specific area of interest that they have. It is an opportunity to gain more research and academic skills and to gain another professional qualification. Depending on your university, you might then graduate with another Bachelor of Science, a Bachelor of Arts, or a Master's degree too. Some of the subjects or degrees that students pursue include things like public health, medical education, or neuroscience. Typically, intercalation will happen after the second or the third year of medical school, giving you time to learn 
everything that you're learning in your separate intercalated degree before practicing all of that in your clinical years at medical school. If you are really interested in pursuing additional qualifications and you want to improve your academic skills, then I would consider an intercalation year. So that was a brief overview of the preclinical, clinical and intercalation years at medical school. It is a very long and challenging degree, but as I said before, it can be extremely enjoyable, especially if medicine is something that you are really passionate about and that you really want to do later on in your clinical years when you get to see things firsthand and in practice it can feel extremely rewarding in terms of social life and being able to have a life outside of medicine i would say it is definitely possible and you obviously will get time off for holidays and breaks especially after your exams where you can go and travel and pursue other interests it is also very common for students to have part-time jobs to help them fund their life as a medical student as I know that can be really challenging and that's also something that I have done throughout my medical school years. I have been able to work part-time as well as keep on top of all of my learning and my placements at medical school. So if you are wondering whether you're able to pursue other hobbies or interests or whether you can go on holiday, then yes, you absolutely can. I think if those are things that you want to pursue and that are important to you, then it really is just a matter of organization and prioritizing things in your life. One of the skills that you really need to get good at is managing your time and organizing your schedule really well, which is something that I think I've been able to do okay. If you are considering going to medical school, then do be aware that it is a long journey, but it is very rewarding and I would say definitely worth it. If you would like more information or insight into specific medical schools and universities, then check out our university profile series, where there is a ton of information on different universities and schools that you can apply to. And if you want some support in preparing your application for medical school, then make sure to check out the FutureDoc website where we guide you step by step throughout the entire application process to make sure that you have the best chance of success. That is everything for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.